Hi, this is Nick with some more woodworking. Today I was gonna to go over the cable management that I did here. Anything that I talk about in here, do it at your 100% own risk. I don't think Onefinity likes drag chains and it is a bit more in depth and upper level, but it is something that I think has helped me out tremendously and I'll walk through it and hopefully guide you with what I did. Uh, if you can like, share, and subscribe, be very, very appreciative. Uh, we got up to a 500. That's awesome subscribers. Uh, once we get up to a thousand, again, not sponsored or anything else. I just use these. I really like them, and I'm going to grab one of these. And it's a Jenny bit. I was going to send it out to one lucky subscriber at random. So if you're subscribed, you're automatically entered. I figure I'll jump right on into this one and uh, get going and show you guys what I did here. Hope you find some things useful and learn something maybe you didn't know before. Okay, first I'll start with the top up here. I did talk about this in my torsion table. Uh, you can find that in the video playlist where I built this actual torsion table. My two wires up here are actually ran inside this torsion box. And this one goes on over. There's holes internal here and goes on over and down right here. My controller box is all located here underneath so it has a least likelihood of getting dust in it. This cable goes down and over goes on over to the my box. The other things that I did, get this out of the way, the other things that I did is I put on this drag chain here. I'll have the link to this drag chain uh, from Amazon in the description. Below, I think this is this drag chain does have enough room to fit the JTEC laser, laser at a later date. I have not tried that yet, but from everything I've read online, it seems like it should be able to. I really do like this. They do have printable parts. Uh, all the parts that you see here, besides the ones I'll point out later, are from Thingiverse. Uh, they're available free. You can also find people on Etsy that sell them. They make great stuff. As far as right here, they do make a part that prints on here, prints on there, and contains this, just like this back part here. I didn't really care to do that. I just ran my cables down here. The only downside is, is I don't get to clean underneath this very often. Uh, but not much gets here since I run my dust collection all the time. But yeah, I would clamp right here and here and you'd run more of this uh, extruded aluminum. So here's the extruded aluminum. I actually, this was my leftover piece from when I cut the back part. Eventually I might end up doing it, but you use two of these pieces and you run your drag chain in there and then get your cables off of there. I just wanted the shortest possible path. Didn't end up doing that. Before I jump too far into this drag chain setup, I'd like to tell you the cables that are going to be moving back and forth, back and forth. You really should because they're going to be pinched, you know, at a very tight angle. And uh, the cables they give you, they're, they're not bad. There's nothing wrong with them. But I think using a cable like this is far superior. These are actually made for CNC's and they have tens of thousands of bend cycles. I did actually, I mean, for a while there until this came in, I, I cut a piece of Cat 6 and ended up just putting ends on it. It works, but eventually one of those is going to break, and when it does, this thing's going to go haywire, and you're going to lose your long car because you saved, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. I ended up ordering 30 feet of this, which is plenty to get me all the way up to here, because this is only for the control wire, to get me all the way from here, all the way across down to here, and have enough to redo this X connector, which I have not done yet, but I will. And the X connector just goes from here up through here and back down. Uh, the cable that I ended up getting is made by IGUS Chainflex. But if you look at the cable, it's a little, let's see if it'll even focus on it. Come on. But anyways, it's four conductor. I think it's 18 gauge and it is shielded, but it's made so that it can bend like crazy and nothing bad will happen. So I ended up swapping that cable out for that. Uh, if you're interested, I'll have it listed down in the comments below, but there is the parts number. So yeah, right there is the part number of what I ordered. And I got 30 feet of it, which will give me plenty to do different things around here with it. Uh, whenever you do, if you do, replace your cables, check the pinouts of these, because some of these are what they call crossovers. So the two pins on one side may be aligned like this, and then on the other side they have them switched. 
you need to look up the pinout diagrams on Onefinity's website and check them for yourselves prior to doing any of this. This is more advanced making your own cables. This isn't just for everybody to just go do cut cables. Uh, make sure that everything's powered off. Make sure that you have the cables removed from your system because you don't want to short them and damage the sensitive components. All of this, you're doing 100% at your own risk. Uh, there is a big reward, but there's also a lot of risk if you don't know what you're doing. So just don't jump out and do it. There are people who sell the extension cables. I don't know what they use for their cabling, but they sell them on Etsy and this and that. I don't have any interest in doing that. So by all means, go find out what they did or go purchase from them. Also with the router cable, I cut it and I spliced it right here and I used a shielded cable. I'll show you down below what I end up doing with that. What you do is you, if you have high voltage and low voltage running parallel, they can, the high voltage can send noises into your low voltage and make this thing do things it's not supposed to do. So you need to shield it and you only want to shield it and actually you only want to ground it on one end of it. You don't ground it on both ends. So I'll show you what I did down below, but I did replace that with a shielded cable because they're going to run in parallel together. Not for too terribly long, but I just didn't want to deal with it later. And you know what, while you're doing this, just peel off all the band-aids, get it done. That's, that's my thoughts on this. The downside to having the journeyman is the cable that comes with your probe isn't too terribly long, but I usually probe on the bottom left. Uh, you can always cut these and put a jumper in between it and resolder it. Obviously remove this from your board before you do that. And everything is all on your own. I take no responsibility for anything you may do. I'm going to bring you on down over here and show you the wiring that I got going on and show you how I grounded or grounded the shield that comes off of this plug right here. Okay, we're down here below the belly of the beast. This isn't the cleanest setup, but I haven't got around to doing too terribly much with it. This, and I do not recommend doing this. This is completely on your own. I tapped off right over here. I tapped off this shield for this cable and this bottom part, at least in the US, and do not do this unless you know what the hell you're doing. Uh, I know that that is a ground and I wired these. I know that that's a ground. Those are all grounds, the bottom. Uh, I used a banana plug and then just ran it directly into the ground. And it, it, shield, or it uh, grounds the shield on this side so I won't have any noise. And I just hooked it into the other cable, ran it on in. Uh, other than that, there's not too terribly much amazing that comes on, goes on in here. I'll bring you around the back of the machine. So back here, like I said before, <laughs> This part right here, I printed out. I got this on Thingiverse. I will link it in the description below. It's free. I don't have the guy's name offhand. Hopefully I'll add it here in the background, but I did not design this. I did, however, print it. It's on there currently for free. Uh, pretty awesome. And the other side over there, if you can see that, I'll go around here and point to it. This side over here is also on Thingiverse for free. You have to make sure that you get the one for the journeyman. Uh, these, these are a bit differently sized than for the regular X35. This part right here that I used is, I, I designed and printed all that. I do have that on Etsy. Uh, look at my last video with dust collection and it'll go over this guy in depth. I'm not gonna go over it too much here. But the size chain I used here and here the exact same size, I think it's, what is it, 15 by 30? I'll have a link for it in the description below. I needed three sets of it, didn't use the full three sets. I uh, had to link them together. So this one, this part right here is flipped over from what this guy is. So I could link it right there. I didn't use the part that goes over this to hold the cables in, didn't really need it. But I did drill this guy out and put a, a little zip tie right there, just because I didn't want the strain on this. Uh, this extruded aluminum here, you can get that at the home stores. I think it's one inch by one inch. It's just angle like that. Mine doesn't exactly fit because I didn't push the channels out and I was kind of in a rush. But it, the design files do fit it if you print it out right and clean it up. I didn't really care since this is going to sit on there. But yeah, you set down your drag chain and then you have it wrap around 
and then I zip tied the wires right here through this hole and then secured them down here and that cable I was talking about that I made that's right here I'll bring you around and show you what I did this is probably a no-no but I didn't want to buy order more pins and do it again because I'd already done it once and it'd be kind of annoying but I did do a pin out check where the where these guys were originally coming from what I did was I just cut the cable that was already there and soldered on to each one and then just taped it up for right now quick and dirty because these these pins are kind of just a pain in the ass to do and it works so yeah that's where my soldering job is it goes from this cable here to this guy here for my Z and then you can see the zip tie right here holding that guy but yeah that's a quick and dirty view of the cable management like I said I will show you guys the links for these two are the two end pieces that hold this extruded aluminum if you guys are interested and then you got to figure out what you want to do if you want rear dust mounting I think this is a great option that I made here and it also holds your drag chain and adjusts with you if you want to know more about this whole dust setup I do have that in a previous video with the my, with my dust extraction what I decided to do there and hopefully this helps you guys if you could leave a like share subscribe uh, subscriptions mean a ton we're a small little channel just got over 500 so thank you guys a ton but if you could do that that'd be awesome uh, if you want something else please let me know in the comments and I will try to get to it but this is about all I had for this video is gonna make it nice short and sweet all right thank you this has been Nick with Zamora Woodworking